What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are staying safe and staying healthy during these absolutely ridiculous times we're going through right now. Today we're going to be talking all about sound design. But before we get too far into that, I do want to give a huge shout out to the fine people over at Adam Audio for sponsoring today's video. We'll get into that a little bit more later on. No limits, no So first let's talk about what sound design is. Sound design is the use of audio and sound effects to create an auditory experience for the viewer of a video. A lot of times people get caught up in the resolution race for video, but realistically audio is just as important. You know, if my whole video sounded like this, you probably wouldn't watch it. But with better and clearer audio, it makes the video much easier to watch. As some of you know, I actually started out as an audio engineer. I went to college for audio and I have a degree in audio engineering, so sound is something that is very, very important to me. Before I started getting really serious into video, I took a sound design class in college. The final project for that class was to take a video file that had absolutely no sound and make a film out of it. One of the things that my professor told me when we were in that class was that your best sound design is the one that you don't notice. And that really stuck with me moving forward. My approach when I do sound design for my videos is to make it feel like you are there in person. I don't want it to feel overly fake or I don't want it to feel like it's missing something. So for today's video, we're gonna take a look at the beer B-roll that I did for the studio makeover video, which you can watch right here if you haven't done that yet. So let's take a look at what it looks like as a finished product. And now let's take a look at that again, but I'm gonna take all of the sound effects out that I added. So as you can see, the sound design completely changes the video, completely changes the way that the video feels. So I like to do my sound design in three layers. I like to start first with a bass, which is kind of like an ambient sound or the sounds that you would actually hear if you were there in the room. The next layer is kind of the effects. So things like your whooshes or your swipes for your camera movement. And then lastly, especially if it's like a high paced edit, I like to add some impact effects or things like that. So let's go ahead and jump into Premiere and I'll show you exactly what I did. So like I mentioned, the first thing I like to do is create a bass layer. So these are things like the can sliding across the table, the can opening. These are all sounds that need to be there for it to feel real and for you to feel like you were there. And then after that, I add things like the camera swipes and camera whooshes. Now something to keep in mind with sound effects like a whoosh is you wanna make sure that you don't use the same sound effect over and over and over again. If you do, you wanna make sure that you change it in some way, like change the frequency or something because it's very easy to notice when you use the same sound effect over and over and over again, especially if it's all really close to each other. And then third, like I mentioned, I like to add the impact effect. So for this edit, I added a bass drop at both the beginning and at the end. And these are just things that kind of spice up the edit a little bit more. And then after that, we can go ahead and bring the music in.
to sourcing sound effects, I have a couple of sites that I like to use. Most of the time I either use Epidemic Sound or I'll use Artlist.io as they both have really good sound effects libraries. Envato Marketplace also is another really good source for sound effects. But every now and again, you can't find the sound effect that you're looking for, so there have been times where I've gone out and recorded the sound effects that I wanted. But for most of the work that I do, I can find pretty much every sound effect I would need on any of those three sites. Now, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is how you are listening to your audio. If you don't have a good audio source to listen to, it's gonna make doing sound design extremely difficult. This is where having a good set of high quality speakers or even high quality headphones is extremely important. As I mentioned before, this video is sponsored by the wonderful folks over at Atom Audio, who sent us out a set of their T7V studio monitors for us to test out and review. These monitors have been absolutely great and I've loved adding them to my setup. The big thing with the Atom Audio speakers is they have a flat frequency curve. Having a flat frequency curve is very important because that means the sounds that you are hearing out of your speakers are accurate. If you're listening to your audio on something like a set of Beats headphones or like Logitech computer speakers or something like that, they're not going to have a flat frequency curve. They're going to have boosted frequencies like in the upper mids or in the lows to add what would feel like a better bass response, but that's not what we want when we're trying to critically listen to our audio. Having a set of speakers like the T7Vs is extremely important because you can listen to your sound accurately. Now getting a good set of speakers does not have to be extremely expensive. Don't get me wrong, you can spend thousands of dollars on your speakers, but you don't have to to get high quality sound. A set of T7Vs will cost you right around $500, which when you think about it really isn't all that expensive, especially when you wanna take your sound seriously. They also have a smaller version of these speakers, which are the T5Vs, which come in around $400. Now, because I've spent years learning audio, I do have multiple different ways that I listen to my audio. I have two sets of speakers that sit here on my desk that I can switch back and forth between, and I also have a couple sets of headphones. And every now and again, I'll actually take my mixes out to my vehicle and I'll listen to them in my car. And I do that because usually cars are really good acoustic environments and you'll actually hear what's coming out of those speakers a lot better. So you always wanna make sure that you reference and check your mixes regardless of whether or not it's a music track or if it's a sound design track. Again, huge shout out to the fine folks over at Adam Audio for sponsoring today's video. If you have any questions about Atom Audio products, you can go ahead and click the link down below and let them know that Dan from Gear Focus sent you over. So that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as it really does help us out here on the channel. Moving forward, we're trying to create some more educational content so that we can teach you guys different things and teach you different ways to hone in on your craft. If you guys have a specific tutorial you would like to see, please let us know. We're trying to create more educational content on this channel. We would love to help you guys out, but we wanna teach you guys the things that you want to learn. So from all of us here at Gear Focus, stay safe, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. It's so far away. Ugh.